What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.6 beta 2 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers and this comes on a rare Friday release. Apple rarely releases anything on Fridays in terms of software but we did get the second beta here and this comes about a week after the first beta and four days after the public release of iOS 14.5. And in addition to iOS 14.6 beta 2, we also got iPadOS 14.6 beta 2, watchOS 7.5 beta 2, and tvOS 14.6 beta 2. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 14.6 beta 2 and what's changed since 14.5 and since the first beta last week. So let's start off with the size of this update. You can see it came in just around 300 megabytes from beta 1. This was on my iPhone 12 but that size should be around that ballpark area on all devices. So pretty small update here. If we go ahead and check out the build number this is where we saw a pretty big change. The settings general about 14.6 you can see here the build number is 18F5055B. So we jumped all the way up to a B in the build number, which is actually pretty impressive going just one week from beta to beta. So a B on the second beta is a good sign, and we may not see as many betas for 14.6 as we may have originally thought. So if we go down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see that is 1.70. 0.03. So now what's new here in iOS 14.6 and the first thing I noticed is actually something I mentioned in my first video, my what's new video. If we go to our settings into privacy and to tracking, you will remember in my first video, my iOS 14.6 beta 1 what's new video, I mentioned how this ungrade the app tracking transparency feature for me. So on iOS 14.5, Ever since the first beta, ever since this feature was even a thing, it was completely grayed out for me on my device and updating to iOS 14.6 fixed that. However, on my main device, which is still on 14.5 right now, it actually just randomly came back. It just randomly was not grayed out anymore just yesterday. So it seems like this could be somewhat of a server side fix. So Apple may be actually updating this server side, this whole section right here with the app tracking transparency. So updating to 14.6 did fix it for me, but for some people who are still on 14.5, you could actually see this just not be grayed out just randomly one day because Apple is you know, changing this up on the server side. Another new feature that Apple updated server side is cycling directions are now available in all of California and Seattle. So you can see here we do have cycling directions if you wanted to go from San Jose to San Francisco, obviously be quite the ride right there, but you can see all of that you could also avoid hills and busy roads so these are now available for both of those places and that does join mainland china london new york city and portland so if you are into cycling you'll be happy to know that that is slowly starting to roll out you know nationwide so hopefully we'll see this continue to be rolled out to other states and cities throughout this year now also inside of the podcast application apple did recently say that we are going to see podcast subscriptions very soon. So we are going to start seeing paid podcasts inside of the podcast application. So if we go to our profile picture up here on the top right, you can see we now have manage subscriptions. So I pointed that out in my first video. And if we tap on that, you can see that nothing has changed here. So it doesn't look like we're going to get an inline section like inside the podcast app to actually see our specific podcast subscriptions, at least not yet because it looks like it's going to just take us to the area where we have all of our subscriptions. So everything you pay for, it looks like maybe podcasts will just kind of be in with all of those. I hope not. I hope we have a section inside of the podcast application, like a little tab or just somewhere in here to show us the, you know, subscriptions that we paid for. But uh, that's just interesting. There's no change here to subscriptions yet, but I will keep an eye on that because we are expecting to see those roll out pretty soon. Now, I did also want to point out that the AirPlay to HomePod feature is much better here in 14.6. I talked about this in my first video, but after using it for more time and just actually air playing to my HomePod consistently, you know, for hours and days, it is so much better than 14.5. So first of all, if I just go to connect to like my office right there, it's so much faster to just connect than it was in 14.5. It's not instant, but it is much faster. And again, when you play, you know, when you go to the next song, it's not near as laggy. And then also sometimes when you go out of the music app, go into something else and then go back into music, it stays right there with whatever song you're playing. Because sometimes before it would just go to a different song, you know, that you played in the beginning and you'd have to go into this menu right here and reselect the office and then, you know, go in and control the music there. So just a much better experience here in 14.6. And it seems like beta two actually did improve 
on beta one, which is much better than 14.5. So definitely some more improvements coming to AirPlay to HomePod. So I know a lot of people have been having that issue, myself included, it was very frustrating. So thankfully 14.6 is addressing that. Another very annoying bug that was fixed here in beta two is the messages were not showing the correct preview in beta one. So they actually changed when I updated to beta two. So before on beta one, this right here, this Instagram link actually just showed the Instagram logo. It didn't even show the image right there. And then the Twitter link right here actually just showed like the Twitter icon. It didn't actually show the media that's inside of these links. But right when I updated to beta two and I went to messages, these were fixed. So that was a bug in beta one and it has been addressed here in beta two. It seems like there's always issues with the messages previews for some reason. Also the unlock with Apple watch feature was broken for some people in beta one. And I never had that issue in beta one. It was not broken for me, but if you were having an issue with the unlock with Apple watch feature that is apparently fixed here in beta two as well. Now going back into the music application, I did also want to point out that the music cue bug appears to be fixed as well. So I do know that somebody in my initial what's new video for beta one did say that it wasn't fixed, but it looks like it actually is at least for me on both beta one and beta two. Like when I tap right there to the queue, you can see the first song is able to be moved. Whereas in 14.5 and previous versions, you were not able to move that for whatever reason. That was just a really annoying bug. So it seems like no matter what playlist I go in, hit shuffle, then go in here, you can see it shows up every time, which is good. And as far as green and yellow tint goes, I have not had any issues with green or yellow tint. Now 14.5 did somewhat address the issue in the release notes that did say that they were working on it and they kind of fixed it up a little bit. And actually a lot of people did say that green tint has gotten better since 14.5. But there are still people saying that it is not, you know, fully fixed. They have the yellow tint, they have the green tint here on 14.6. So hopefully beta two fixes that. If you are having that, let me know in a comment or just reach out on social media. I don't have any of those issues, so I cannot test those, unfortunately. But as far as anything else goes, I really haven't noticed anything else new here in beta two. 14.6 overall is just going to be a major bug fix update. I mean, 14.5 had so many brand new features in it that you can't really expect too many new features in 14. 0.6, especially a 0.6 update. You don't usually get that many features. So really just a big bug fix update. And when it comes to the performance, performance seems about the same as beta one for me. Now, if we go into the Geekbench scores here, you could see I didn't get the best score here. Actually, I got a 1586 on the single core and a 3979 on the multi-core. And you can see compared to beta one, it is a little bit lower on both the single and the multi-core. So again, that doesn't really indicate how well it's going to perform in a day-to-day, -day, you know, a real world scenario. This was just right after I updated. So there were things going on in the background and things like that. So that is just always fun to keep track of those scores. So I will run another one later tonight, you know, once everything is finished processing in the background. And when it comes to battery life, I have to say that battery life on beta one was actually pretty good for a first beta. And given the build number, we have a B at the end of this build number. I would expect the battery life to be about the same, if not better. It could actually be better than it was in the first beta. So I will update you guys in my follow-up video, but there's really not a lot of issues in general, like not a lot of bugs, not a lot of things really hindering the battery in general on 14.6. So that's always a good sign because there were quite a few bugs after 14.5. Although 14.5 did patch up pretty much every bug I had, but the ones that I still had existing from 14.5 have been fixed here in 14.6. So really nothing, you know, that's going to hinder the battery life too much. So I would expect pretty good battery life from 14.6, even from the first beta and especially when the final comes out. So now let's talk about what is next for Apple. When are we going to see 14.6 beta three and when are we going to see the final release? So today is the final day of April, April 30th. And next week is May. So I actually tomorrow is May, but technically business week, the first week of May is next week, May 3rd. So I actually would expect to see 14.6 beta three next week. Now we did have a rare Friday release today. Apple does not usually release beta software or any software on Friday, but they did release it today. However, I would not expect that to continue next week. I would not expect to see back to back Friday releases just because a Friday release is rare by itself. And I don't think that they would do back to back Friday releases. So we could see maybe on Thursday beta three, but if we don't see it next week on maybe like a Thursday, we could see it on the 10th or the 11th. And then after that, we could actually see the final the week after. I mean, I could see the final version of 14.6 getting released on the week of the 17th or the 24th. I think that before the new IMAX and before the new iPad pros get released, or maybe on the same day is when we will see a new software update. So we are getting those starting on May 21st. So I'm assuming that's when they'll be in stores as well for the new iPad pro and the new iMac. So we could see iOS 14.6 on the week of 
the 17th. So I would say maybe just like one or two more betas here for 14.6 until we get the final. I just do not think that we're gonna see 14.6 anytime in June because on June 7th is when we see iOS 15 beta one. So I think the end of May is when we will see iOS 14.6, most likely before the iMac and the iPad Pros get released. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 14.6 beta two, again, released on a rare Friday. And this was a pretty big jump from beta one, given that build number with a B at the end. So it is gonna fix up a lot more issues than I probably even addressed in this video. A lot of those are just in the back end and not anything we can visually see. But if you do notice anything, or if you notice any of your bug fixes or anything improve, let me know down in a comment below. And of course, I will have a follow-up video coming on iOS 14.5 tomorrow on Saturday, but I will also briefly talk about 14.6 beta 2 and just with me using it all through tonight to see if it really is better than beta 1 or if I find anything else new in the software. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave this a thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my iOS 15 beta coverage starting just about a month from now, a little over a month. It's crazy how quick it's approaching, but make sure you guys are subscribed for that. And of course, I will keep you updated on all all these iOS 14 updates as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.